This is David Lowry with Club Fantasy. Today we will be looking at The Witches, published by Mayfair Games and designed by Martin Wallace. Hey everybody, it's David Lowry with Club Fantasy, and today is our very first video board game review. We've done quite a few of the written ones, but we're trying to move a little bit more into the video and seeing how long it takes to get it all done, so here we go with this one. Today we're going to be talking about The Witches by Mayfair Games, based on the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett, and of course designed by Martin Wallace. It's a one to four player game, takes anywhere from 45 to 90 minutes. It's slightly cooperative, uh, light Euro, good gateway game. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, and I'll give you my final thoughts after we're all done. All right, here we go. We are looking at a three player setup for The Witches. I will kind of describe what everything is and then I will play a couple turns through so you can kind of get an idea. Once you do a couple turns you pretty much got the whole game so it's really not that difficult. Alright so first off we've got some special dice, normal wooden dice that come with the game with a cackle side that will give you cackle counters if those are rolled. You've got the problems. These right here, the green ones, are the easy problems and you can see on the bottom right side what the dice roll and any additional card bonuses would need to total to beat it. And on the lower left side is the victory point value. You've got the purple tokens which you normally don't get to see but they obviously are just a little stronger. Alright. Some of these guys are baddies and they have special consequences if you do not defeat them. You've got your player aid right here, your training witch display which each person, each training witch comes with a special power. Uh, Tiffany right here gets to use her invisibility once per game. You've got a hand size column or row which if you have two of the green problems solved and stacked in there for each one that you do have you get plus one to your hand size and then down below is if you have two purple or hard problems solved you get plus one to your die roll for every two that you have in there. All right. Um, you've got these counters here which are crisis counters which add plus two to whatever problem you're trying to solve not in your favor in the in the problems favor you've got the cackle counters which you will get by rolling and you can get rid of these by having tea with other witches they eventually lead to leading to these which are black alice counters which are minus one at the end of the game alright so you definitely want to stay away from those and to do that you need to make sure you don't have too many cackle counters alright now let's talk about the cards the cards have a couple uses number one they start with a uh, symbol at the top this one is the broomstick symbol that allows you to move any place on the board by discarding this card as long as you know as long as uh, there's no reason for you not to move there I guess so the other one is the headology symbol which is the Groucho March looking uh, mustache there. If you use it, the card for that symbol, it's plus one to your die roll. And then you have the magic symbol, the magic card, which is the two stars at the top. This will give you plus two to your die roll, but every time you discard one of these to play it, it also uh, gives you a cackle counter. So you gotta keep that in mind. Also on the bottom, you can see that there is text the text you can play at any time during your turn, not any time during the game, but during your turn. And then at the bottom you will see the title of a location. That is what we use to determine where the next counter is going to be played when it comes up off the top of the draw deck over there. All right. So that's how the cards are played. And you start with five. Each person on their starting, uh, when we start the game, can put their token in an empty space that doesn't have a token already on it. So as I discussed earlier with the broom card, that allows you to fly to any place on the board. Otherwise you get to move two locations that are connected by the roads uh, during your turn. Alright, so you can move one or two. Alright, so during the player phase, we're just going to move right into it here because that's really about all there is to it. Um, during the player phase, uh, you're going to place a problem tile. Alright, and for how you do that, again, is you come up here to the draw deck. And I already drew one earlier, and I drew one for Granny Weatherwax. All right, Granny Weatherwax's cottage. You would take that pro problem tile down here off the row, and if it is open, 
Can I, if that spot is open, then you place it there. All right. If the spot is not open, and we'll probably run into this in a minute, then we keep drawing until we do, or maybe put crisis counters on top of tiles that are already existing there. So yellow always goes first in this game. That's uh, Dimity Hubbub's special power. So yellow gets to go first. So what she would do is she would decide, obviously, not to go to the purple tile right away because that would be a little too difficult for her. So she's going to walk right over here to Mad Stoat. She sees that there's a fever problem there. It's only going to take seven to beat it. So the first thing that she does is she rolls two dice. She rolls exactly a seven. So we know that she's going to be able to beat it on the first turn. She doesn't need to play any cards or waste any cards to do that. But she does have to roll the last two dice because she might roll one of these cackle counters. So she's going to roll those. She doesn't roll a cackle counter. So she gets to pick up the problem. It goes on her trainee display right over here. And that is one closer to her being able to have a bigger hand. All right. That is her turn because she, she already did her move. Uh, she's done the problem. And that's all she can do for now. She can't move any farther. So then we go back to flipping the next card. The town of Slice or the location of Slice pops up. Slice is up here. And as you can see, there's already a token there. So if there's already a token there, then a crisis counter gets placed on it. That gives a plus two to how hard it's going to be. Uh, you cannot have more than one crisis token on any place. If there's a witch there, then we just keep drawing cards. But you have to keep drawing cards until you can place a new token. So the next one is Creel Springs. Creel Springs already has a token, so that gets a crisis counter as well. Draw another card. Black Glass. Black Glass has a crisis token or has a counter as well, so we put a crisis token on that. And then we have Lonker Caves. Lonker Caves are down here somewhere. Where are there? It's Matt Stoat. Lonker Castle, Lonker Town. Where is it? Where is it? Up here. It also has a tile, so it is going to get a Crisis Token. Now the problem with this is, is if we run out of Crisis Tokens in that stack, the game ends. And this is where the co-op portion of the game comes in. All the witches have to kind of tackle these crisis counters to make sure that stack doesn't run out if they want to make sure they have enough points to win the game. So in that sense, this is where the cooperative portion comes in. Other than that, they're really basically on their own. We still have to keep flipping cards here to find out what's going to happen. Slice. Slice already has a token on it, a counter crisis counter on it, so we can't put any more there. Then we get Razorback. Razorback is empty, as you can see, so we will go ahead and take the very next one in the row and place it there. Now it is Red's turn. Red's turn is Amagrana, Anna Grandma Hawkins. She starts with one red magic tile, which is like having one of those cards in your hands. But because she starts with those, she also starts with a cackle counter. All right. So she gets to go on her turn. She's just going to walk one space over here and go straight to the dancers, the broken limb. She needs an 11 to beat it. It's worth two victory points. She rolls her two dice. She rolls 12. So obviously she's not going to play any cards. She doesn't need to, but she does have to roll the last two dice, and she rolls ten. So she just gets that for, and puts it on her display, and she is done with her turn. We start flipping counters and cards again. We got Mad Stoat. Mad Stoat is right here, which there's a witch on it right now, so nothing can happen there. Then we get the town of Badass. That's going to get a crisis counter because there is already a token on that space keep drawing the place where the sun does not shine another crisis counter the dancers there's a witch there so nothing could go there black glass already has a crisis counter and then Lonker town so we have an available space in Lonker town so we will put a token there and it is now Tiffany's turn the blue character and she gets to decide where she wants to go well she started off in kind of a hard spot, as you can see. She, she can't go anywhere but one place. And you cannot just walk through a place unless you have a card or a power that allows you to do that. So she, and she may have that card, um, but she, she actually doesn't. So she is going to go ahead and go here and know that she has to get an extra two. So she's going to need a total of 13 to beat this problem of the broken limb. So she'll go ahead and roll the first two dice. She rolls a five. All right, so she's got five. She needs 13, so obviously she's gonna need eight more. 
Now, she's got two more dice to roll, so she could definitely beat that, possibly. But she's looking at her cards here to see if she's got anything that maybe might give her a bonus, right? We got um, absolutely nothing that is going to give her a bonus on this particular thing as far as the text goes. And one thing I should point out as you're looking at this, you see cards here with the power of three on it. What that means is if you have three separate cards, well that means different looking cards, different faces on them, and they all say power three, you can discard those cards to automatically beat whatever problem that you are facing at that time. And you can do it any time during your turn. So you, if you roll on a dice and it doesn't look like it's going to happen for you, you can go ahead and uh, use that set of power of three to discard uh, or to solve that problem right away. So she doesn't have much here, but she does have the symbols that she can use. So she's going to go ahead and play the Nanny Og card for the Hitology to give her plus one. All right, so now she's sitting at six. She will also go ahead and play the Miss Track card to give her plus two more, which will give her a, ca a cackle counter. So she's going to take her cackle counter, she'll put it down in front of her, and she just added three to her total. So she's at eight and she needs 13 so she needs five more so she'll roll her last two dice and she rolled 11 so she didn't really need to play those cards but you never know so the the crisis counter gets put back on the pile she gets her first problem solved and the cards that she used gets put back in the discard pile over there and then she would draw back up to her hand limit of five so she'll draw two more cards and put them out in her hand now obviously in the real game your cards are hidden. Nobody knows what you've got. But for the purpose of this video, we are going to go ahead and, and leave those face up. So that is essentially the game. When you get to the purple tokens, like here we have Duke Felmet. Duke is 20 to beat. He's worth 5 victory points. But if you do fail to beat him, his consequence is whoever fails to beat him will end up over here in the dungeon. And if you're in the dungeon, you basically lose your turn, unless you have the power of the power of invisibility, like Tiffany Aching does, the blue the blue witch. Or if you have a card that is invisibility, you can get out of there at the beginning of your next turn if you discard the card. So there are some consequences to beating these guys. Again, just remember that if you run out of these crisis tokens before uh, before all of the problems get laid out on the board, then the game will end. Uh, and the game does end when all of these tokens here get laid out on the board. So right after the last one gets laid out on the board, whoever's turn that is, they will finish their turn, the game will be over, and you will total it up and see who has the most victory points. So let me go ahead and, and give you my thoughts in, in, in just a minute. Alright, now my final thoughts to the Witches by Mayfair games. This is a very light game. This is something that is very easy to teach. You can teach it and have it being played within 20 minutes out of the box. The components are well done. The artwork is amazing. Uh, if, it, if you're a Terry Pratchett or a Discworld fan, obviously you probably want to have this in your collection. This is a great game for family night, a great game for teaching kids. Uh, the kids get a sense of accomplishment. It's a great way to teach them about Euro games and how they work and movement. And, how to strategize with some light strategy in this game. Uh, it's not at all going to be a Martin Wallace typical game. For those of you who are Martin Wallace fans, it's not a few acres of snow or any of those others like that, but it is a good, solid game. Uh, if you're looking for something that you can teach the kids, something that, and I get this question a lot from a lot of people, is what's a good game for kids to be able to play with, and, and, what, and this is a really good one for the kids. I, I definitely recommend this. This is almost as good as Catan Jr. or whatever that whatever whatever other game that they put out along that line. So definitely get it. It's worth it. I'm going to give it 7 out of 10 stars just because it's easy. It's uh, very easy to teach. It does have a little bit of strategy to it. It's an attractive game as far as the artwork goes. Uh, the kids really seem to like it. And for those people who are gamers, you will not be bored or anything like that. It's, it's quick, it's fun, and it's simple. Go ahead and get it. The Witches from Mayfair Games. Thank you.